<laughs> What's up, baby? What's up, boo baby? How you feeling? I am tired. Tired? Mm-hmm. I hear that. Let me get comfortable. You look beautiful. Thank you. Is this how we're starting? Yeah. We're supposed to start the way we always start. We can start the way we want to start. That's our podcast. But that's what we posted. That's what we said we were Nobody gonna start. said I wasn't gonna start that way. I'm just starting a different way right now. So you're not starting that way. I am starting that way. You're starting. You just said you're starting a different way. I was just asking you how you're doing. Right. So. But it's a different way. No, it's the same way. It is not the same way. What's up, good peoples? Welcome to the relationship cheat code where we give you the game, <laughs> helping you to stress less and experience your absolute best in your relationship. This right here is my beautiful, tired. Mm-hmm. Still delectable, incredible, sensational, indelible wife, Fiona. And this right here, this is the love of my life, my sweetheart, my poo poo, my poochie woochie, my homie, my road dog, my partner in crime, all the things, my husband, Aise. Welcome to the Relationship Cheat Code, y'all. What's up, y'all? Welcome. So, I got a um, really a question to kick this off. Mm-hmm. Um, why is it that you, when you drink your, your tea, you put lipstick on different parts of the cup. Why don't you just attack the same part of the I cup do. every single time? I do. It's like you're showing them the lipstick print. It just happened to be that I picked it up at a different place and went to a different spot. I wasn't calculating where my you're lips saying we're looking for consistency here. No. Yes. I want you to stop managing, micromanaging how I drink my <laughs> I'm tea. I'm just saying. Like. I thought you were about to ask something of importance. <laughs> you ain't even asking nothing worth listening to. No, I am asking you something. Like, again, you're just showing. I wish I had some tissue so we could wipe that part saying off. again. Like, you're about to go back down and like, teach, a, teach a point on a joint. No, I, what I'm saying is that, you like, say anything. That's, you know, that's no, point. like, just if you're going to do lipstick, attack it from the same spot every, every single, single time. This is, let this be this a lesson. This is the petty part, y'all. Let this is the this, petty part of marriage. I'm everybody. trying to lift up some in terms of the you trying aesthetic to tell your partner what to of do, the podcast. You inspire resistance and rebellion. Now I'm about to come over here and do this part. I'm just really trying to inspire obedience. Submission. I mean, I'm just saying. Well, this is not, we didn't say this was going to be a comedic <laughs> Why it's gotta be comedic? Like, All I'm this asking is for is, 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 is that you just like you know. I mean, for the aesthetic of it, that's what I'm talking about. Are you being serious? Are you like playing? No, a game I'm right being now? serious. I don't think that that looks good for yours for the way that you want things to look on the on the podcast. Yeah. Well, let me see. How many F's do I give? Let me. Um, zero. <laughs> All right. You know, I, I just knew you was just trying to like get a little little funny no, fun joke. No, joke. Yes, I'm you are. Serious. You can't no, be serious. I'm serious, boo. You are serious. I mean, I noticed that when I was You're actually really serious. A hundred percent. I should have said something. I would have. So let's just think about it like this, y'all. I can't believe that we're starting out talking so, about where my lips have gone on the cup. Yeah. So if we were to, I generally on, don't. But I, I generally, if we were to be on, but I don't like, really care. The Oprah Winfrey Network or something like that. They would probably have somebody right there with tissue wiping up the lipstick print so that it's not visible on the cup. And so I'm just trying to operate in a certain level of excellence. Well, then get your tissue and get the wiping. Wow, 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 wow. Bum, 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 bum. Are you really going to get a tissue? Yeah. Are you, Zay? <laughs> Are you serious? All right, everybody. Welcome to the Relationship Chico. You know, sometimes we just be, where are you going? He done taking the time to go open up the door. Why, why are you doing that? Are you saying? Why are you open up the door? We're going to hear that on the while we're recording. Oh my gosh, um, I think this is hilarious. My husband is really walking back over with a napkin. So you're going to wipe it up every time my lips hit another spot, sweet baby boo. Is that what you're going to do? You're going to just be my my cup wiper. Drink from the same goddamn spot. <laughs> That's all you got to do. Just drink from the same spot. That's all I'm asking. It's not a big request. Oh, it's a very simple request. Just drink from the same spot. controlling. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me just on I need y'all to comment right now because I know some people are like, I know this Bama. They understand. Not. First of all, I understand. But so let me. This, this, if you understand, let me, let me, let's, like, let's what is the resistance about? I understand. In fact, when I saw that I had two spots on the castle, well, I actually noted it. But at the end of the day, is now, there's this, a difference, this, y'all. So, y'all saw how it was boom, before. let me finish talking. There is a difference. At the end of the day, is is it worth 
bringing up, this is for you to transfer to your relationship. Is it worth getting up and saying, I'm going to go and get a napkin so I can make sure I micromanage your lip marks? Is it worth having a conversation about? Clearly, I didn't think so because I didn't think it was worth doing nothing about when I noticed it on my own without I use it saying anything. Some things we are just particular about, but you need to get over it. Bow, 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 bow. Dum, 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 dum. You need to get over it because you might be right. And this is small and petty, right? You might be right, but don't nobody care? I don't care. It's not that serious to me. Woo, 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 woo. The details matter. I mean, this right here is a and great... Here's the thing. If it really isn't that important to you, this is just kind of like, you know, getting serious for a second. I can't imagine... If, if the cup thing was that serious, I know it's not that serious, Taiza. It is, but it's not. Um, But if, it were, if the issue is really that serious to you and you're really like in the moment triggered or feel like, ooh, then you need to give feedback or you need to ask for a different approach. At another time, not at the time that you're feeling some type of way. Try and teach again. You know what I mean? Do it at another time. I just want y'all. I just want. I just want this. I just want this mundane, almost like waste of time moment focused on on the the, my lips on the cup to actually be of use to the people. It's not a waste of time. (laughs) Right. I mean, this is actually because I teach. I I taught a little something. It it can actually be transferred into um, what I want to talk about today. Uh, which mm-hmm. is really revolving around how we interact. Y'all stop looking at where my lips go on the cup. See, they paying attention. It looks <laughs> like different. Like, the aesthetic is different when you don't see a big lipstick something. print on there. And so, so you know, again, this right here is is um, are the are the details, y'all. The details matter. Mm-hmm. Um, and so today, what we're going to talk about is uh, when it comes to raising children, um, parenting, and different approaches, different styles, and how when you're married. <clears throat> Um, what was that big I'm gasp sorry, I didn't for? Mean to do <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what is the big gasp for? And my wife said that she wasn't in the best of spaces. No, you know what I'm saying? Physically, she's not in the best of spaces. And she just did a big exhale, yeah. <laughs> Oh. Because I'm talking about the different parenting styles and the way I mean, we show up and the way we raise our children, et cetera, et cetera. So, do you it. not want to talk about this topic? I'm fine to talk about it, babe. I'm so happy that you're taking the lead with today, and, and I'm fine. I just. It's just like, you know how when you just, you're just tired and just kind of, and that was really what that was. And I didn't mean it wasn't as the, pretty as the that. Mic to catch and it, it wasn't as controlled as that. <laughs> it was a, a gasp, but like, here we motherfucking go again. That's what that was. <laughs> That's, That's really what wasn't. that sounded like to me. No, it it did. Yeah. And so, ahead, sweet baby. I don't want your touches right now. I love you so no, much. I don't want your touches. You I don't want your touches. Light up my okay, boom. Light. Keep your hands back over there. So, so last night, y'all, here's the perfect example. Dang, he can't write. He got, he got examples already. I do have examples. I mean, show? but the examples are so plentiful. I don't have last to like night. just think about last night. I can think about today. But I'm going to say last night just because it was the most recent thing that, not the most recent thing, but it was something that stood out to me. So, y'all, so probably about three or four weeks ago. Now, some of y'all will be able to relate to this. Others might be like, I use that you being petty. What the hell? Like, Curious. you know, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but I'm lifting this up because when it comes to parenting and when it comes to being married, you're going to be confronted with a number of issues that that are going to smack you right dab in the face. And and you're going to have to navigate those spaces because one partner will be in a certain place and not give two Fs. The other partner will give 13 Fs and, and <laughs> it will be that significant. And so last night, um, you know, I'm walking up the steps, engaging in everyday ordinary activities and I happened to make a turn toward our laundry room. And so let me just backtrack for a moment. About this is, this is a kid. About story four or, or five story? about four or five months ago. Not even four or five months, four or five weeks ago. I went through the process because what I noticed is that people have started to get extremely lazy <laughs> and just throw whatever it is inside of the laundry room on the floor, missing. I mean, the basket is big, y'all. You know what I'm saying? The basket is big, but yeah, I'm seeing clothes everywhere. In the laundry room, on top of the dryer, on top of the washing machine, in between the dryer and the washing machine, out of the basket, and then people that sometimes the basket be empty and the clothes still be out the basket <laughs> on the floor. <laughs> like, what is going on here? And so the first thing that comes to my mind is that, am I the only person that notices this? So we got a household uh, with four adults. Four, I actually know five adults now. Myself. My wife. Oh, well, you're counting the kids at school. Yeah, our oldest daughter and our other daughter. Five adults. 
but I'm the one that notices that we got empty baskets inside the laundry room with clothes on the floor. And so for me, I get frustrated when I see stuff like that because, again, about four or five weeks ago, I said, I'm going to go ahead and knock out all of this, make sure all of it's squared away and everything is taken care of. I'm going to make sure everybody's clothes are put in certain places. I'm going to take them to their room. I'm going to even fold some of the things that belong to them. I'm going to make sure that they're good. And then four or five weeks later, we find ourselves in this spot. And so yesterday, like I said, I walked up in there and then I asked the question, who? Who? I said, who? Say it again. <laughs> who is leaving their clothes in the dryer on top of the drying machine on the floor? No, that's not why is this, like that. Why is this basket inside of the laundry room that's full? Not. And everybody says, it ain't mine. Of course. Bruh. And so I start to feel myself boiling on the inside because. Uh, we got two adults that's over 40, and I feel like sometimes I'm the only one that's lifting up this type of stuff when it comes to that. Like, I'm the only one that sees it. And so I asked my wife, that's she don't know true. what I'm talking about. But what I do appreciate, baby. You are making assumptions. What I do appreciate, baby, is that you actually got up and went to go take a look. And I think you did that because you might have known what lane or what direction I was going down. What so, direction? Um, of being, like, uber irritated for the remainder of the night. Well, it didn't make a difference. She was still <laughs> irritated for the rest of the night. I just said, let me go and lean into his, because this is one of the areas that I give zero Fs about. Zero. It's just my Say truth. Say some more about it's that. It's just my truth. Like, what, what exactly do you give zero Fs about? Because when I walked down to the laundry room, I looked in there, and the level of irritation, agitation, the questioning, he was questioning different people and kids and who, where, who did who, you know, like, I was like, Dan, this show must be a whole hot mess. I went in that joint. They come to sight, y'all. It was like six white socks on the floor. A little uh, a little white T-shirt. Maybe like two or three little things. Literally, this is just my mindset. If I had seen that, as I did when I went in there, what I usually did is he saw it allowed a whole storm to brew. Signed meaning, created narratives, I'm the only one, walked around, questioned people, furthered his agitation, knowing the kids around here just say, nope, nope, nope. He already know that. Kids right? and my wife. Uh, excuse you. I don't, because I tell you what I know. If I don't know, I just say, I don't know, could have been. I might maybe I'd put it there. Maybe I I don't know. But I I don't I don't I don't hide nothing, okay? But the bottom line is he already knows this. So for me, what I would do is what I did. I went and looked at the little pile of stuff that took all of my five fingers to bend over and pick up one with one time. Whoop. It wasn't a huge mound of things and put it in the dirty clothes basket and then exit the room. But instead of that, what my husband will do is he goes into this, this kind of martyr. It's all me. I'm the only one who cares about. And I really be wanting to say, it's a whole lot more going on in life than them five socks and that T-shirt and them underwear sitting on the floor in that damn laundry room. Pick it up and put it in there and be quiet and keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? That's what I really be wanting to say. But I said, let me go down here. I don't know what it is. Let me go down here and pick it up just to show that, you know, sometimes you have to just show up even though you really don't care. I don't really care about it. But I wanted him to know, I, I hear you, kind of. So, you know, I went and I, and I picked it up and, and, you know, it didn't make a difference. He still had a, a it was irritable for a remainder of the night. It was whatever. I, that's when I just like to mess with him. And that's what I did for the rest of the night is just messed with him um, and try to make him laugh. Yeah, still but my pillows and all that type thing, of stuff. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Everybody is different. And I, I think that you sometimes go into the same old loop-de-loo and... Um, you know, I try to intervene sometimes like I did last night and show you that I'm listening. But a lot of times, like if you want to live in that world, just go on and live in there. And when you finish doing whatever you're doing over there, I'll be sitting over here because I just don't, I don't really understand why over and over and over again is such a thing. Now, I, I know that there will be people who will say, yeah, if you're just, doing stuff by yourself and you don't have that is not the case our kids wash their clothes 
Ayuse does not wash anyone's clothes unless he takes it upon himself because he doesn't like the fact that some things have gotten stacked up because clothes are in the wash or in moving from the, the from the wash to the dryer out on top to of the, the dryer. to the um on basket the or whatever. So and we have we have seven member family. So sometimes there's you know some of that happening and he doesn't like that. So then he'll just try to move on. And people are not necessarily going. And he's like, if you put clothes in there, they need to be washed and dried and folded all on the same day. Yeah, bro. That's not happening. And I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, and I, that's not a goal of mine in life. Fortunately, it's not a goal of mine. Wash, <laughs> fold, and put away the clothes on the same day. Let me tell you, that ain't even on the list. No. And if that's a goal, I don't want it. I don't. Differences. Hashtag differences. I don't give a hoo-ha hell about that. The hell? Like what? What in the world? So this is gonna be good, y'all. So because I, I, I'm just saying, boo. Like again, you do not wash anyone's clothes. Everybody takes care of themselves, but you want it a certain way. And for those of you who are more rigid, and perhaps how you were raised, how things were, you're neat freaks. You freaks, you have rigid expectations around certain things. There can be some give and take. Like I said last night, I went. And, let me go see what you're talking about. Pick this stuff up and put it in. But at some point, you have to say like, bro, I'm calling myself a whole situation when i could have just picked the clothes up or i could have just closed the door and kept moving you know what i'm saying and then i could have said so, like hey y'all it's some clothes in there on the floor somebody need to get to those but it's it's, it's not bo- why does it bother you so, so so it trickles down to other areas and and so you say i could have just closed the door and kept moving mm-hmm. but to me it's indicative it's of a room. broken system of a broken system and so i'm even curious to know y'all may disagree i don't know but but it's it's situations like that 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 to me reflect sometimes I feel like it reflects poorly on me in terms of my parenting mm-hmm. and what I've instilled in our children. You can say me too. I see how you try to walk gingerly. I'm just on, saying on I'm me, not yeah. Us. You already said you was feeling in a little funky space. So I'm no, not trying. I mean, I know that I know that you have these feelings. We just feel differently. So so, you know, I'm just to me, I feel like it reflects poorly on me as a parent and what I've instilled in our children in terms of their failure, yeah, refusal, right? oh. neglect. Mm. To, to wash, to, dry, and to, fold the clothes to, all in one day. To follow through mm. on some of the tasks that have been requested. And, and so my wife and I, we've bumped heads on a number of occasions about this mm. because I may consider this something to be significant, but you, on the other hand, may think that it's not that big of a deal. And so consequently, <clears throat> I'll fall back and I'll be frustrated. Or I'll and, fall back. And our children. And let you do what you do. And our children will continue the same old, same old behavior without um, sometimes consequence, without intervention on our part, without redirection sometimes on our part. And, and so it just continues to just spiral. And so, so for me, again, it's an indication that you're saying when you say I'll fall back, that that, that I'll fall back. Let me finish my point. You fall back as if I'm telling you to fall back around these things. I don't tell you to fall back. Like, are you fall back because I'm having a problem, and then you have to fall back and not give the correction and the structure you want. I just want you to be clear because I haven't had told you. Yeah, to I'm, fall gonna back. I'm gonna finish my point. Yeah. So, so I think that fundamentally it's indicative of a broken system Mm -hmm. so that's where it becomes a big deal for me because if it's broken there where else is it broken Mm -hmm. and i've seen other spaces and places where the system will be broken and and it just causes an enormous amount of frustration and i'm gonna come to your point in just one second um but you said where else is it broken you mean in that in their lives in the kids lives in the household what do you mean yeah in terms of them bringing tasks to completion, them doing things as requested, as expected, you know. Just in life? Inside of the house specifically. Oh, in the house, okay. And so our children are uber, um, I wouldn't say uber, but they they are achievers. Yes, they are. And and they they definitely excel academically and athletically. Socially. And socially. I mean, they're, they're the bomb. So let me just make that clear. So children, y'all are phenomenal. Y'all are excellent. <laughs> and and so they looking at it. Yeah, just in case y'all are looking <laughs> at it. Like y'all are y'all are y'all are wonderful. I think that you all would also acknowledge and agree to the fact that like y'all be coming up short. And so so you know, for me, again, it's indicative of a systems thing. Like so, for instance, I'm gonna have to remove some things from somebody's bedroom today um, because they didn't do what they were supposed to do 
this weekend. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, this has been a repeated conversation over and over and over again. And we mentioned recently that you said sometimes phones being removed is not an option because you want them to always be able to have contact with us. That's a, that's a gross misgeneralization, but I'll, I'll let you have it. Because so, that's not representative of what so, I said. So, you know, again, like, you know, you may even have an issue with some of the things that I remove, but I'm going to remove those things because I'm tired of having the same conversation over and over and over again. I'm tired of things being half done. Just get them all the way done. I'm tired of clothes being, you know, left out on top of. Just put them away. Um, it becomes frustrating. It becomes overwhelming. And so your question was like, why can't I close the door? And so for you, for me, the reason why is that it doesn't go away when I close the door. It's still there. And if I'm aware that it's there, then it needs to be dealt with. And so my question for you then becomes, why can you just close the door? Why can you just close the door and keep it moving um, and not address it? not tend to it. It's almost like out of sight, out of mind. And for me, again, that leads to a bigger systems issue, which ultimately ends up in a breakdown in the laundry room looking like it looked four or five weeks ago. And that's what I'm trying to avoid by tackling it in the moment, mm -hmm. reminding them of what the steps are, what the system is, and, and being clear about what the expectation, and then also elevating the consequence and following through on it when it's not met. And so... Um, you know, you say, why can't I overlook? It's because of that. Like, I'm not trying to get back to where it was before because that's just going to cause extra frustration, which then impacts us. And I'm not trying to have us impacted, which impacts me. And I'm trying to be impacted in that type of way. And so the way that it looks right now and the way it's when I'm dealing with it in the moment or frustrated in the moment, it's like at a three. I'm not trying to get to a 10 in terms of frustration. Mm -hmm. And that whole piece around falling back um, I'm not saying that that you don't fall back, and I'm not saying that um, you're putting me in a position where you're challenging me so that I have to fall back. I'm, what I'm saying is that I'm choosing to fall back, mm -hmm. not like there's this, you know, like you're coming at me in a particular way where mm -hmm. I need to fall. No, I'm choosing to fall back to manage my stress. Mm -hmm. So what's your question? My question is, why is it that you can close the door? Because I'm flexible, I'm flexible, I know how to pick my battles. Because I'm flexible, I'm flexible, I know how to pick my battles. So, sweetheart, you said that... Our children are good kids. They, they're good on their socializing and their academics and all the things. Young people will not perform up to par on point all the time. They just will not do it. It's not actually normal. And, and if a kid is really on point with all the things, I get a little curious about are they perfectionists or... You know, do they not know that it's okay to not have everything all, all together all the time? But more than anything, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it all comes out in the wash. Everything gets gets handled. So what I mean by that is, you know, the whole laundry room thing, that was, like you said, that was a, a level three because it wasn't really a big deal. It wasn't a whole lot wrong in the laundry room. It was a little teeny pile over in the teeny all in the corner. So My response was a level three. Um, so... And not to me. Your your really? your response was disproportionate to what was happening because it impacted you and your mood for the rest of the evening. So much so that we were getting ready to watch something on television as we normally do. That's he, a different comment. That's sitting, a different topic. He's sitting, That's a different he comes issue. in the bedroom, sits on the bed, and then turns the light off like it's time to go to sleep. First of all, I've told my husband multiple times. Please don't do that because you sound almost like you're talking to a child. I am not the one, but we'll come back to that another day. Um, and, you know, and then, you know, obviously it impacts our ability to just hang out and, and connect in in the evening. So my thing is, it's not that you can't get feedback. It's not that you can't. I, I will see that and, and then come and say, hey, you need to go and check out blah, blah, blah. If they're all saying, no, it's not me. No, it's not me. I'll just say, Kina, 
you go in there and clean that up. But it wasn't me. Okay, I don't know who it was. Just go do it, right? I might say that in that moment. I might say that later on in the evening. I might say it the next day. It's not like sitting on my spirit so that I have to like have it resolved right now. And I feel like you have that kind of a, it needs to happen now type of energy a lot of times. And it's a personal problem to me. And that's fine. You can have that problem. But for me, it's not that I'm not addressing things. It's not, I do not address them to the degree that you do as much as you do. There are certain things that are your area. When it comes to the, to the, the kids around chores and tasks, you really do lead in that area. <clears throat> However, it's not as if you're by yourself, but I'm not riding them in the same way. I am allowing for flexibility. Even what you talked about in terms of taking stuff out of um, the young person's room, the young person, our, 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 uh, our child's room. I know who you're talking about. I've never had no problem with that. It's almost like you... You like to make up a story in your mind that, you know, I know you're probably going to have a problem with it. You're not going to like, it's not that I don't like it. It's just that I don't care as much as you do. I absolutely, I absolutely know and believe that children need structure, Ooh, excuse me, structure and guidance and parameters. And they get that from both of us. I, I, I don't, I don't not think that that's important. I think that um, the degree to which you want everything lined up, a lot of times it's just not, that's not, that's not valuable to me. It's just not, I mean, you can look at that, look at my side of the room and your side of the room and you see that answer. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and I don't think there's a right or wrong. And I think that the failure of couples, the failure of you um, and me, even at times is thinking that one way is the right way or the wrong way. They're all kind of households and they're all kind of judgments people make around. Oh, you know, it, you know, it, I need things to be like this. Things need to be in place and that's the way a house should be and whatever. And other people who are much more casual with it. And you know what I'm saying? Like there is no right or wrong. There's a preference. You have one preference. I have one preference. You were raised a certain way. I was raised a certain way. At the end of the day, do I feel like my kids are, or our kids are going to, you know, go off in life and not be able to handle washing their clothes? No, it's not that motherfucker serious. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they got it. They all do it. They all wash their clothes. They all dry them. They all put them away. They all do the things they need to, to do to take care and manage themselves. It's just that you have a preference in your house around how you want things to be. And you have a right for that to be. However, my thing is this. I give a little more grace and flexibility on the space that's theirs. But no, should it be just all over the place and clothes all over the floor and everything's just a mess in your room? No. Can it be like that sometimes? Yeah. Does it need to be like that routinely? No, right? You're like, it shouldn't be like that, period. Point blank. It's going off. There needs to be a consequence. And I think there's value to both approaches. I just think that, generally speaking, there's an in the middle piece, y'all. We got to come back to the middle. And you just be, personally, in my opinion, you be getting way too affected by the joint. I'm just like, why are you so affected? Mm -hmm. um, I just don't understand why I message a whole mood up and what have you. And again, I just want to acknowledge that our environment matters. You know, if, if, if things start to get too off for me, which my threshold is much higher than yours um, in terms of what off looks like, then I also will feel the impact of my environment. Um, but I, um, I just, I just, <laughs> I just think I'm just more flexible. That's just the bottom line. I'm more flexible you know, the kids, they all got chores. They clean the kitchen. They got to rotate in the situation. They clean the kitchen. They do this. They do that. They don't do everything with perfection. This is the norm. There's nothing off about that. Nothing. So so here's the thing. I definitely understand where you're coming from in terms of you saying that it's the norm developmentally. We're walking them through a process and supporting them in becoming responsible Adults. Mm -hmm. I get that. I think that, that for me, sometimes the frustration and the, the, yeah, the frustration comes about when I know that they have greater capacity and they're not, they're not um, living up to a standard that I know that they can hit. For sure. I get that. And so, you know, what I would like from you is is more 
support and engagement around this piece. Um, and let me be clear, like, you know, you have at different periods of time really stepped up and, and, and been more vocal about different things. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know what does it for you. I know recently you came downstairs into the kitchen and, and you had to call them out for like not sweeping um, every night. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know why you did that. Why what? Why you, what, what brought you to a place of expressing something about that versus about some of the other things. But when I see you moving in that way, then I feel that, oh, it, it matters to you too. And so that right there is, is um, it's encouraging to me. Mm-hmm. And so I am curious to know, like, why? Why did you lift that piece up? Is it just because yeah, you got tired of things up all the time? I'm just not around when you do it. I don't know. I don't. I don't know if you're not around or if you're just not paying attention. I. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm always paying attention about that. No, I don't think so. No, and when it comes to that, I do. Be I think what stands out to you more is when is all the things that are not happening, and you feel like I'm. You're the one speaking to those things i think that stands out to you more than the things that i am talking to them about i also do my approach is different so this also gets into differences so i will um, do a lot of texting and say hey this is what needs to happen da, 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 right i don't and then i only get to speaking usually after because they're 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 doing different things our kids are teenagers so that gives me a record of what i said to you um, I circle back and say, hey, did you see this? Confirm that you have seen it. Yes, blah, blah, blah. And then I'll I'll um, come back and say, hey, like, what's going on? Did you see the text? Oh, yeah, da, 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 whatever. So I do that a lot, too. But that's just a difference in style. Mm-hmm. Um, what was your question? You said, oh, you said, no, no, no. You said, why am I saying it about certain? I mean, I say it around different things. I think the fundamental issue, I say, is that... Um, I just think their answer is I'm more flexible than you are. Why do I not say things as much? Because I don't get as agitated. You're more rigid, and so you get more irritated and tight. And so then you feel you have to respond. And so for me, a lot of times I'm looking at that and I'm like, ooh, is is it really about correcting the kids or is it really about like you need things to be a certain way and you're responding to your own trigger? Um, And two things can be true at once, but sometimes it's like, bruh, like, can you go self-soothe somewhere? That's just honestly how I experience you sometimes. But at the same time, I heard you say you want me to be um, more vocal. Is that what you said? Mm-hmm. So I think for me, this is like, um, you know, when we're, when we're talking to couples, we'll tell one partner where the other partner, where they're just totally at two different places on something. Like you need to tell them what it looks like. For me, I need you to tell me what that looks like. Just saying be more vocal isn't really, I don't know what that means for you. Okay. That's going to be helpful. Um, so, uh, tell me, you know, you don't tell me right now, but I'm just saying like, if you can think about that in terms of what specifically would yeah. you feel better or you want me to do, mm-hmm. then I'll be happy to do that, babe. That's helpful. That, that, that definitely is helpful. And thank you for um, the invitation. <laughs> You're welcome. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I think that, you know, in terms of a teaching tool, this is the relationship cheat code. And so mm-hmm. we've managed to get to 28 years being together and 21 years of married. And as I've said over and over again, like I feel um, even in the midst of all of this more connected to you than I ever have. Same here. And so, you know, the communication be on point, the the, um, quality time be on point, the sex and intimacy be on point. Like all of that stuff is on point. Mm -hmm. And, And so I'm just curious to know, like what would you say and I'll share mine as well, but what would you say are the reasons that those things are able to be on point despite this area of contention, difference, what enables the the mm-hmm. sparks to continue to be sparking? Despite this particular area around things around the kids and how we... Kids, yeah. I mean, but it could be different stuff. So you mentioned earlier, like, your side of the room versus my side of the room. I ain't got nothing to do with the kids, but just a difference in terms of the way that we do things. Like, and it, there, I know that there are things that you get irritated and agitated with me about in terms of 
um, taking forever to process and pontificating all the time and Mm -hmm. having difficulty in different situations, making a clear, concise, just quick decision. And so I'm aware of all of that. Like, so with these differences, because what we're talking about is differences in parenting styles, differences in expectations, Mm -hmm. differences in the things that we consider to be of value, not of value, um, and so we managed to have a successful marriage with those differences being there. And so what has enabled you, or ena- yeah, enabled you mm-hmm. to get as close to me as you have, even with those differences being present? Um, I think a good mix of um, uh, vocalizing, that sounds so academic, vocalizing, um, but like a good mix of like saying what the issue is, like giving voice to what I think is a problem and saying how I experience you. So even in this area, like when we've bumped heads, like, and I think you're doing a lot of doing the most, I'm telling you how I'm experiencing you, how I think the kids may be experiencing you, right? You have a different perspective, you're telling me. So I think a good mix of of sharing, like this is, was working and was not working for me um, and acceptance of you at the same time of who you are at your core that um, I think I had definitely had to grow into um, just recognizing that you, you are who you are. Um, and, um, and then also being able to see even in the midst of this, this is a forever conversation. Like there are some, sorry, I got to teach real fast. There are some things that problems that are perpetual and there are some things that are solvable. This would be an example of a perpetual issue in our relationship around how, well, how we manage the kids around certain things, how we manage certain household tasks, what we think are important or is not important, you know, or, you know, as not as important as the other person, you know, all that kind of stuff. This is perpetual. It's been like this forever. So I feel like even in the grand scheme of things, um, seeing where um, you have grown um, in terms of even being more flexible, even though I think you are more rigid in this area, I I still think you have definitely become more flexible over time. I still feel like you listen to me um, and you, you hear me when I'm sharing like how you're coming across and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, a good mix of vocalizing, sharing, like what the issue is, not just putting it away, accepting who you are at your core in terms of your personality and recognizing where you've grown. And of course, always at the foundation of that is that we're really friends. So we actually get along, we hang out, we be with each other. You still supposed to be taking me to see what is it? The don't, society. Don't, don't, do, don't, just, don't date the. Oh Lord, the movie, the movie. I want to see the movie. Yeah, You're supposed to be taking me. Right, like, and we movie. do these kind of things on a regular basis, right? So I think that that gotcha. also at the foundation, you know, kind of solidifies mm-hmm. just us. That's good. Um, so you say vocalizing acceptance. Um, what was the next one? And recognizing. Recognizing. Yeah, and then the friendship piece. Uh-huh. Um, VARF. V-A-R-F. But, um, what did you say? VARF. Bruh. V-A-R-F. <laughs> Vocalizing, <laughs> acceptance, no. recognition. We're always trying to make, always trying to make an acronym or a framework. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? So like, don't take that's it out there like, thank you, I use Yeah, vocalize, accept, <laughs> um, recognize, and be friends. Recognize the growth. Yeah, recognize the growth <laughs> and be friends. Uh, what's that framework (laughs) um so for me what i would say is and what's interesting is that a lot of what i would express is similar to what you just shared Mm -hmm. um real talk like what i have issue with is not all that there is to you Mm -hmm. and so because the the other stuff outweighs the issues right Um, you give me something else to focus on. And so I would say just, just, you know, I've cultivated the ability to not um, be all consumed with the ish. And, and I've developed that ability to 
focus on the value, focus on the, the, the gift. So don't focus on the ish, focus on the gift. And, and so for me, like the gift is way greater than the ish yeah. in so many different areas. And so that's, that's, and I'm doing that more often than that. And so these moments of, I think we've always done that. I think we've yeah, these that. moments we've of frustration always. and irritation. Like, I mean, I'm not walking past the laundry room every single period of the day. And so the majority of my day is not where I'm confronted with the issues. And so, I, you know, if it's in that moment where I focus on the ish, um, that I start to get, I may start to spiral and go down a road of irritation and lift it up to you and express my frustration. But the overwhelming majority of the time, it's um, I'm in a state of, 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 you know, appreciation and bliss and, and um, gratitude mm-hmm. for who you are and, and the blessing that you are in my life. And so, again, instead of focusing on the ish, um, focus on the gift. Yeah. And, and the other piece, too, is you have shown me um you have shown me how to how to how to how to stretch so it's really weird like these things are significant issues to me um but you've shown me how to view them differently hmm. and so it's like when you say you're more flexible um, you've helped me to expand my flexibility in this area. Mm-hmm. You have because, like, when you say you can just close the door, at times I do. Just close the door. At times I do try to ignore and just walk away. <laughs> a lot of times You're I like don't be saying. Right a lot of times I don't be saying anything. <laughs> I see the stuff, but I don't say anything. Um, but but that right there comes from me really listening to you. And me finding a different way to to manage my frustration in terms of instead of catastrophizing and and making it seem like it's the end of the world, I put it in its proper perspective. And so what you just lifted up a moment ago in terms of our children, I mean, I say that our children are are great and, and um, they do an excellent job academically, athletically and socially and all of that. And so I'm truly thankful. But you remind me of that. Mm-hmm. And you helped me to see that and, and truly appreciate that because, you know, sometimes if they ain't walking a straight line, they just, they just, they off. And, and, <laughs> but I'll, I'll treat that experience of them being off as though they've done something catastrophic. And it's, and it's not that. Mm-hmm. There still need to be consequences. And the other piece too is that, um, so, so what did I say? So I said that I focus on the gift instead of focusing on the ish. Um, you've also taught me to be more flexible. And, and the other piece that, that I want to say is that when it comes to, um, you know, our journey, um, how you've supported me in this experience too. Mm. So, so what I mean more specifically is there are times where you may challenge my approach to consequences and, mm-hmm. and, um, and, and what I may want to say to the children, but more often than not, you're in a space where you express like a certain level of understanding mm-hmm. and, and you can see where I'm coming from. Mm-hmm. So, so you like, all right, cool. Um, I get it. And you may not necessarily even go with that approach when it comes to, the consequence, but but you understand where I'm coming from, mm-hmm. and so it's almost as if like you trust, you trust the process, you trust me, and with that trust, like you know, this comes an increased level of like appreciation and and in connection, and so mm-hmm. so you know you're trusting me, and we've been together for 28 years, so it's like. I mean, you're trusting me with with our children, with your children. Um, the children have come from your womb, and and you know, and so that right there is. I don't know. It's weird, but it's. I mean, especially being so many years in. That's significant, you know. Like you, because we know a lot. I mean, we we coach a lot of folks, and so you know, for those who don't know, my wife and I were trained therapists, relationship coaches. We do this work 
with folks all day, every day. And we got a community of people. I blame core community uh, where we do group coaching as well. So you can go to blamecore.com to learn more. Um, you just say that part. You just say it one more time. Really, bro? I'm just going to record you if you don't mind. What was the piece you just said a second ago about me? Trusting you with our kids when it comes to the consequences. Why you want me to say it again? You know, and your the way, the way you think things should go, and you know, would you be, are you basically saying I, I for the most part fall back and you pretty much lead in that area? Uh, that's what we're going. And I'm just asking, is that what you're saying? And so you, and you were saying like some. I don't want to put words into your mouth. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you trust me to lead in that area. Uh, mo, mo, did you say most of the time? Yeah, most of the time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, you do. You trust me to lead. And I'm appreciative of that because, you know. To record that. Mama Bear ain't going to trust, um, <laughs> or at least she shouldn't trust a man that she don't feel is trustworthy. That's right. And so, I do. Yeah. But let me tell you, if I, if I and it's not often because I don't have to because you, 90% of the time, I'm in, a, in agreement with what you're saying. And um, even if I'm not, fully like I'm like dang that's that's a bit much I still know that there's a reason for a daddy and there's a reason for a mother and I'm not a daddy and I'm not a man nor do I want to be so I I stay in my lane but every now and then you know I'm like mm, no this is a problem mm -hmm. and it's not often and I really feel like that's a blessing that I don't because it's not not often because I'm just like Oh, I just got to do what I usually say. I'm not even built like that. I do submit to your leadership, but I'm not built to submitting to something just because of submission. I submit to those who should be submitted to. Mm -hmm. And you are my husband and you are following, you know, what you feel is good and right. And I feel like you are led by God. You are led by um, a higher conscience, right? By your heart and by your intellect in a way that is admirable, so I submit to that. But I don't just submit just because you're my husband. Some people might like that because there, there's a there, there's a certain way to be. Mm -hmm. And so I'm saying that to say that um, there are some times where I have to say, uh, this ain't going to work, and I'm very, very clear about it. Like, And I think I usually, I usually um, try to use language to let you know that I feel strongly about it, like this does not work for me and it is not okay so we need to talk about it but i don't have to do that very often and when when i do that you know what i mean like sometimes you be like i'm feeling some type of way you ain't you ain't listen to what i'm saying you trying to usurp what i'm saying you know whatever you say and i'm like bro like you can't have it your way all the time <laughs> you know what i'm saying like so i recorded that yes this was a petty moment very petty. Maybe. Maybe a little bit. No, but it's also a way for me to bring it forward because right now we're not in the middle of any kind of conflict. And if I need to pull it out at another time, I'll just pull out the recording. Do you encourage people to do what you just I'm did? I'm just saying, like, my husband will just act like, because I'm saying, babe, I need you to fall. If you if you don't agree, I, I need you to fall back for me because I don't feel like, I don't feel comfortable with what you're saying. And I usually say, like, he, like, you just... You know, you, you, you don't willingly like, all right, baby, I hear you, whatever. That is not the way you roll. You're getting your feelings. You're like, all right, all right, whatever, fine. And that's like once in a blue moon. It is not often. And I usually say, the way, have you tell it or the way you, the way you be reacting? It's like I'm over here pushing up into your lane, trying to usurp what you're trying to do and intervene and interfere on the regular and you just uh, you can't handle it and that is not the case so i'm just i'm just glad that you was able to acknowledge that and that i have a recording of your acknowledgement i'm trying to figure out how like the um lipstick got back on the outside again there he go there he go i'm just saying it's supposed <laughs> to be like this because you know i saying? paint outside the lines and i sip the cup all over you left handed too. I, You know what I'm saying You left handed I do just, it all over Just keep it like to that Get you outside of that box So you can come outside The box I want you to Drink your drink On all sides Really bro So you can see all sides Of the situation <laughs> Nah So so yeah So you did record that and, um... uh, Yeah I just wanted to say that mm -hmm. Cause I mean you, you, you said that lovely on here But in real life <laughs> 
Wow, 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 wow. I ain't never, I don't want really to be hearing that. You be coming at me like, I be having to hold my, hold my stance like, this bro is not going to gaslight me into thinking that because I'm saying I'm not cool with this particular approach on this particular day around this particular situation, that somehow I'm challenging his manhood and challenging his ability to be a father, bro. You get my def- def- deference, you know what I'm saying, 90% of the time. And I'm just saying some of y'all, I use they included, men folk, Sometimes get so used to the deference. You get so accustomed to. And I mean, my deference is not one that doesn't, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I don't like just go along to get along, but I, I feel, like I said, I feel blessed because I generally get to do that. I get to do that because I have you. You're such a, you're such a good father. You're such a good father. And, um, and you're such a good husband and you're so thoughtful. Like you have your clear ideas and thoughts and feelings about certain things, but you're never just thinking from your own perspective. You're always considering what I'm saying or what the impact might be. You know, even if it's in the aftermath, you, you never just kind of solely focused on yourself. That's a blessing. And I feel very blessed by that. So I get to do that. I just want to reinforce that. I get to be in a position where, you know, I can sit back and you lead in that area and I'm good. So I just want to, Remind you that, you know, when I am saying, hey, wait a minute, hold up, that I'm not coming to challenge you uh, just for the sake of challenging you. I'm saying that I see something that I don't think that you see. And I think that in those times for you, it is a control issue and you want to do it the way you want to do it, period. And it's just hard for you. And it would be great if you could you know, at least sometimes get to a place of deferring, stepping back to what I'm asking with grace versus animosity or like negative energy. Or now we're going to be stanky for the next hour or two. You know, or you're going to be quiet for the next couple. It'd be nice if you kind of shift into relaxing into it and be like, all right, babe, Um, because you've you've not yet done that. In, in our relationship For the most part You have not You'll come back yeah. like We'll come back later on And you might come back And be like I heard what you were saying Whatever but, but in the moment And maybe for the rest of that Day or the next hour Or two or something Whatever You know You generally are not Going to acquiesce gracefully You're going to acquiesce With an attitude And mm-hmm. I'm, You know I would love it If you could Validate What I'm sharing with you And even if you can't In the moment just try to show some grace in some way instead of energy, stankiness. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Those, are, those are my thoughts. No, I, I definitely appreciate that. And um, it, it it makes sense. Um, you feel some type of way right now that I said that? I feel... Appreciative. Oh, you do? Yeah, of the fact that you lifted it up and you lifted it up in this space. Um, I feel like I'm able to see myself in a different way and and um, really appreciate the value that you bring um, just in terms of even having that perspective. And so... So for me, it's like you're showing me to myself. You're showing me to me. And so in my mind, it feels like I'm always conceding and always accommodating. I feel like I've heard you. And always giving. But to hear from you the perspective of, like, you're always, um, not always, but more often than not, Yielding, submitting. I mean, is that my perspective? Is that your perspective, or is that not? I mean, that's my my experience, my perspective. You know, in in this area, is yeah, that, it's, that it's, it's, different no, from what you? So, you know how you say like every feeling is not a fact, mm-hmm. and so although it feels to me like I'm always yielding, acquiescing, and 
falling back. The fact of the matter is that I'm not. Oh, okay. And so, so the fact of the matter is that more often than not, you are. And, and so I have to examine where does that feeling come from? Mm-hmm. Why do I feel like that? Um, yeah. You can yield, like, submit, surrender, like, nine out of ten times, but that one out of ten where you don't, it feels like it's equivalent to me yielding nine out of ten times. You know what? And I don't know, we may have to do a part two, two to this. <coughs> Excuse me. I mean, that's how it feels to me. Yeah, I, I get that. But as I'm listening to you and I'm thinking about like us and like our dynamic, I'm so I do feel like what you're saying is true. And like there's like this like so, so so there's like actually what happens, what goes down in terms of like the situations. You know, whether it be talking about the kids or something else, right? And but but in this instance we're talking about the kids. But um so, so oh, how am I trying to say this? So essentially, you feel like so you feel like you are acquiescing more often than not, and you realize that's not the case. And I feel like I do. I kind of let you be. But one thing that I think that I can continue to work on, that I think you generally do well, is that while I might be deferring or acquiescing more often than you are able to realize at times i may not energetically do it in the way sometimes that would be helpful for you Mm. so this is like a little a bit of an aha for me Mm -hmm. so i can do that but be like look you got it do what you got to do i'm not really like it's not that serious to me you got to bae you, get, you know what I mean? So it's passive okay. aggressive. Right. It's kind of like, I'm not even being passive. I'm not even trying to say passive aggressive. Just kind of like matter of fact about it. Or just not even tapped into what you're doing with the kids. Just kind of like, yeah, all right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, and I'm just looking at you and I'm doing my thing. Right. It's another thing for me to acquiesce and to validate your perspective. To mm-hmm. To like say, I I understand where you're coming from, babe. Or I know that this is a big deal to you, yeah. and that it point. matters a lot to you. Mm-hmm. And I don't know that I do that as well. Do you know you what I mean? Yeah, you <laughs> you're no, like I, I don't. You. You don't. So I feel like because then it will probably feel different to me. Then yeah, I would I think know that's probably what it is. So it feels yeah. like that, but because I feel like I do, but I'm not generally, especially around things where if it's something that I'm just wrong, I'm wrong. But if it's something like this where we are just two different people and we have two different vantage points, um, then I have learned how to fall back where I need to recognize it's more important to you. But I'm not generally like, and hey, babe, you know, you know, I'm not doing all of that. I'm just like, all right, it's a perpetual problem, Iana. You ain't got to give it all that energy. Go on and let him be. But I think that sometimes what you may be looking for consciously or unconsciously is to feel like you've really been heard to mm. feel like I really understand. I mean, we talk about that all the time. Like mm. your partner just needs to be understood. And I could work on doing a better job of that. I may not always agree around these kinds of things, but I could probably, not probably, I could show more understanding, like be more intentional about emotionally connecting in with you around these things. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a certain level of like yeah. barrier that I have up because for me, I'm trying to manage not getting super irritated and don't want pop off queen to come out. So I'm trying to not be too emotionally connected into it. Just kind of like "Mm -hmm, even, which is a hell of an improvement for me because I, in the past would just be aggressive, aggressive and whatever, Um, or not aggressive, but just opinionated and like, what the, it's not that fucking serious, you know, all that. I'm not trying to do that. So I'm just trying to go to like even Steven place, but there's Mm -hmm. another level Mm-hmm. And um, even Stephen Place is not a bad place, but I feel like I definitely we've I, I've, I've I I could do better. I can go beyond just being even, and I can acknowledge like, babe, I get it. Mm. Wow. Even though I don't, I just lie and say I get it, and I'm just playing. 
So you gonna start doing more? So, sometimes, yeah, sometimes it be like that though. Yeah, like, I, I mean, don't I, get, I, I really get don't get it, get yeah. it, but I get that this is a big deal to you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Same for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, so I think the energetic piece might be a part of why it feels that way to you. So you gonna make a shift? As long as you tell me what it looks like. Wow, 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 wow. No, I'm just playing. I can um, make a shift. Um, yeah. I, but but it's not it's not gonna be easy for me to do. So I do I need to I, like for real actually like knowing what that would look like. Mm-hmm. I know some of y'all are gonna be kind of like, well, yeah, I know what it look like. Just be more whatever, you know. But I don't know. Like I don't want to be patronizing. I don't want to be whatever. But I I can be more conscious of, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and I, and I feel like I have. I, I actually feel like I have in some ways more probably within, within the last couple of years. I feel like I I'm trying to emotionally be kind of. And you're just kind of irritated and agitated. Um, but I still could do better. So Yeah. So Ooh, I appreciate that. Thing man. To death, Lord. Nah, I mean this is good. This is good. definitely good. And so um I definitely will follow it with you in terms of like what it can look like. Um okay. I don't know if this needs to be a part two so everybody else can hear what it needs to look like, but <laughs> but um but yeah, this has been good. And then as I mentioned a moment ago in terms of my part, uh just acknowledging um the moves that you've made the growth that i've seen and and falling back submitting and surrendering um and and um you know yielding like to you and and not making everything such a big thing and catastrophizing everything and and um you know when you lift up your perspective and just honoring that validating that like i can, i will do I would definitely do more of that just simply because I know that the majority of the time it's the other way around. Like I'm getting, it's kind of it's selfish of me um, to be getting what I want nine out of 10 times and still have an issue with the one. That's selfish. That's selfish. It's just emotional maturity. It's immature. Yeah. It's, it's, and I feel kind of good to be saying that because I've been very emotionally immature in our relationship at times and, You've led the way. So mm-hmm. I feel, it feels nice to be able to yeah. say that I've grown somewhere where you still need to grow. It's <laughs> my baby being petty right there. It's not petty, it's what I'm saying. I've said so many times, my husband has grounded me and modeled for me in so many ways, have I not? Mm-hmm. And it's the truth yeah. because I have been an emotional infant. Uh, so I'm like, oh, look at me. Mm-hmm. I'm messing with you though. Yeah, I know. Kind of. <laughs> All right. This has been another amazing episode of the Relationship Cheat Code where we get to come and talk about our stuff, work some of our stuff out, share with you. And um, we have gotten some of your messages about things you want to hear us talk about. Yeah. So continue to send that in. We also will be opening up the um, Ask the Maats segment in our podcast soon so if you're interested in being on and talking with us and sharing your situation or issues so that we can get feedback um, all you got to do is email Um, it's in the link below admin at beintentional.com we appreciate y'all follow us up at relationship cheat code all the things and we'll see you next time peace out